these. So we've Pussy's plan from Dunleary to Arklow to start with, haven't we? We have. Um, and um, so Dunleary's up here and um, where's Arklow? In the middle of that big arc. Arklow's in the arc, get Ah, it? there. There's Arklow. And Arklow's there. And uh, what we've got is we've broken it down into Muglins um, and then Wicklow and then Arklow. Um, and we've got the tides. So we've got the tidal heights um, and we've also got um, the streams. And the streams are in relationship to Dover. But it just so happens that Dover and um, Dunleary are quite close. Um, however, if we leave um, before high water at Dunleary, um, we should be getting into Arklow at a good reasonable time, which will be about two o'clock in the afternoon. Um, and if we can make it faster than that, then all the better, in my opinion. But... We've got to be leaving here tomorrow at 8 o'clock in the morning. smooth operation than our entrance. We departed at 8.16 and that is 16 minutes past uh, the time we wanted on the plan. So the um, to offset that what we're going to do is we're going to put a bit more motor on and you can hear Bev uh, oh, increasing the revs as we speak. So we're going to put a bit more motor on because there's no next to no wind. Might be some wind, we'll find out in a bit. Um, and um, we're going to go and see if we can get meet our first waypoint, which is what was the island's bed? Muglins. Muglins. So that's our first waypoint. So it's um, a holiday camp. <laughs> the only thing that was slightly interesting in the harbour this morning was um, a uh, boat towing an absolutely massive yellow marker. I was like, you can't possibly be towing that, but he was. <laughs> it's doing very well. Uh, we've just come through Dalkley Sound um, and in the plan we were supposed to be there by 8.30. Now admittedly we've actually gone through it um, and um, it's now <laughs> 9 o'clock. So we've actually uh, taken a lot longer <laughs> to do what we thought was half an hour we've done it in three quarters of an hour so like i say this is this is the advantage of trying to do this also Just, the, the wind has not come round to the uh, correct direction and it's not of correct strength <laughs> yeah to add to our complications the wind has not come round to the, the direction we were hoping we were hoping to be able to um sail um, but it is basically bang on our nose. And 
knots of wind. So it's four knots of wind at the moment. So it's not going to stop us progressing, but we do prefer to be a sailboat, not a motorboat, but never mind. Um, in the sound, the depths were going absolutely bonkers. Um, but it was very interesting to see. But other than that, it was just pots to look out for. Well, it's a bit of a rolly day. Um, the storm has been coming from that direction for a couple of days and we've now got swell coming from the other side of the Irish Sea coming this way but it just makes it very unpleasant when you just all of a sudden get the boat rolled over and there's not much you can do about it. The wind hasn't turned up we keep hoping against hope uh, we're just making progress and we're hoping that the tidal component picks up and helps us along it's just a slow day Oh, hang on, gain a piece. Yeah. Um, when we came out of uh, Dunleary, uh, the storm was on the Sunday. Uh, we decided to leave on the Tuesday so that the, um, basically you always get swell, don't you, Bev? You do, and they always say after a bad storm, give the sea 24 hours to settle down. So that's why we came out on the Tuesday. But even on the Tuesday, that is still swell. Oh yeah, but I think if you come out yesterday the swell would have been like like the sides. unpleasant sea. Uh, probably caused by the big swells and the fact that the seabed lifts here but I have to say I imagine if the weather was uh, wind over tide here this would be a very very nasty piece of sea to be in. So um, yeah I mean say we are talking really really mild conditions and we are being kicked about quite a bit. Yeah, exactly. Uh, uh, the only good thing is it's good for my, my, my abs. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, woo! <laughs> the boat is uh, the sooner right of these, the happier I'm going to be, to be honest. Yeah. I've definitely collected that one now. <laughs> years ago, maybe a little more, 150 years ago, um, when immigrants left Ireland, the last side of it was on the southwestern tip, a place called Mizen Head, and it was the last a lot of them ever saw of Ireland, and I guess it's dead in their memories, but for some reason, this is another Mizen Head. It's not the real one, that's a couple of hundred miles that way, it's just our Mizen Head. There's, there's at least two of them, and this is one of them. Uh, so it can be a bit confusing because when you hear the forecast saying that there's bad weather from Mizen Head to Loop Head or something like that, it doesn't mean this one. It means the one on the southwest tip. This one doesn't get mentioned in the forecast. And I don't know why there are two of them. Me? I would have banned it and called it something else like um, Yellow Rapeseed Head or something like that because it's got plenty of that on top of it. But it is what it is. So there you go. The unreal Mizen Head. Well, well, Beverly, it's 2.30. Is it time? <laughs> well, our passage plan said that at 2.30 we should be outside Arco Harbour. And 
we kind of are. I mean, it's over there. I can see it. We are about two and a half nautical miles away from it, and we should be there in another 30 minutes. But I think that's not bad. Yeah, because basically, um, right at the start, uh, we didn't depart until quarter past, and then Beverly didn't realise just how big um, Dun Leary is. Dun Leary is. And I, so didn't, I didn't leave the slip bang on doing five knots because they probably would have sent out police boats after me and arrested me for violating the speed limits. But um, we're here. We are where we should be, just a couple of nautical miles further north than I thought. But Arco's over there and I can see it. Yeah, so in the next plan versus reality, I will be doing the planning and we'll see how that one turns out. It'll probably be a nightmare. <laughs> In Arklow, mm. and it's very nice, and we're having our coffees. And um, I think looking back on our passage here, um, we can draw a number of conclusions. You brought up a very good point. Basically, I thought that um, we were able to make our course and make our waypoints more or less the way we wanted, but we were not sailing. Um, so that meant that we could actually point the boat the way we wanted to go and we could maintain five knots in the direction we wanted to go. Um, yeah, we could pick our course, we could pick our speed. Yes, whereas when you're sailing and you're having to beat or uh, do a downwind sail or something like that, that tacking can take quite a bit of... Um, uh, distance off, off you and uh, you have to be quicker to make mm. up the time really. You do. I think what it means is that on this particular journey it was very easy to set a reasonable speed. Yes. We, we predicated the journey at five knots and that was delight for slow bits and fast bits to average out at five knots but if we were sailing and you were sailing with a, a component upwind you might have to assume an average of three knots Mm. Even though you're doing five or six, because by the time you've done all the zigzags and things like that, your your speed over ground, your velocity made good, might drop down to three knots or two knots. Mm. And that's the one that counts. Yeah. And we didn't have to worry about that in this. I would very much like to have worried about it. True. Because <laughs> we do but, prefer to be a sailboat, not but a... But sadly, the wind was not playing, and the swells definitely weren't playing. Mm. Um... With regard to the swell, um, we left a full 24 hours um, out. So how did you think that went, Bev? I'm glad that we did. I think if we had left any earlier, we would have had more mountainous uh, seas. I think it's probably taken up to die down. But I also have an opinion of my own that when you've had a prolonged blow, mm. uh, particularly one in an area like the Irish Sea, where it's been coming across the sea for a week, I think it just lets the swell build up all the way across the Irish Sea and I think it just takes more than a day for it to settle down from that. Mm. I mean, so the swell wasn't undoable, but we certainly had quite a bit of swell and uh, at Wicklow Head... 
anywhere where the uh, seabed rises and you, you, you get choppy waters, races and overfalls, on, on, on big swells like this, it's just going to be nasty. Mm. Even on a calm day, it's not going to be nice. Yeah, and, and we did have a calm day, so I could imagine Whitlow Head being quite a, a nasty bit of coast to, to deal with. I can imagine the best thing to do with Wicklow Head on a bad day is just be four or five miles off it. Yes, I agree with you there. Yeah, of course there's a big bank out there. <laughs> yeah, you, you've got Which, to just sort of like um, sort yeah. yourself You out. maybe swap one evil for another. I don't know the area well enough really, but that would just be my gut feel. Well, we're here, and um, so we're going to enjoy the town. We're going to have a bit of a relax and um, enjoy the coffee, I think. Yeah, I mean, so, you know, when you have sunshine, you make hay. You do. <laughs> Cheers. It's all very nice being in here, but we had a bit of a surprise last night, didn't we? We certainly did. Um, I thought, are we going to have to report on yet another wart? But luckily, it just seems to be the one day. Um, but boy, was it noisy. It was like the end of the world, wasn't it? <laughs> if you ever wonder what sound the universe will make when it gets ripped apart at the end. <laughs> it's pretty loud, that's for certain. Um, but at least it wasn't through the night, which is when uh, our last uh, war was. What was the noise, by the way? You haven't said yet. Um, it was, uh, they were driving some pillars and um, pilings in. Uh, yeah, they were driving pilings in and um, they look like they've still got one more to put in, but they haven't done it today, thank goodness. 